Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light is now claiming they did not fire their disgraced executives that ruined the Bud Light brand. They are claiming those people are still on a leave of absence, implying that they're not gone. They might come back. They might come back at any time. Of course, that only creates more confusion. The reality is, of of course, they're not coming back. They can't possibly come back because even though Anheuser-Busch is a large multi-billion dollar company and has tremendous resources, they still need to answer to their independent distributors. Their independent distributors are 500 independent companies that have been financially decimated by the terrible and ridiculous idea to utilize Dylan Mulvaney as the face of the Bud Light brand. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate you guys. I'm trying to get to 25,000 subscribers. So if you can subscribe, please do subscribe. Thank you for that. Yesterday, we reported on this story from Daily Caller. It was all over the place. An exclusive source, a regional marketing executive, told a reporter at the Daily Caller that top Anheuser-Busch marketing executives behind the boycott are no longer employed with the company. And he explained it, and it did make sense. He explained that, really, the independent distributors were absolutely furious at the thoughtless promotion of Dylan Mulvaney, tied up with the Bud Light brand. Immediately, distributors were getting tremendously negative feedback. There was tremendous negative feedback on social media. And what did the company do about it? Bud Light essentially did nothing about it for weeks. As things got worse and worse, Alyssa Heinersheed decided to go on a leave of absence. Now, a leave of absence is different from resigning. It's different from paid time off. But this was on April 21st, three weeks after the April 1st promotion of Dylan Mulvaney. Two days later, her boss, Daniel Blake, also decided, hey, I think now would be a great time for a leave of absence. So what is a leave of absence? A leave of absence is different from paid time off and vacation time. A leave of absence is a way for employees who are experiencing an out of the ordinary circumstance to take time off work. There are multiple reasons, could be childbirth, adoption, caring for a sick family member, or some other family emergency. A lot of employees actually qualify for a leave of absence. So a good lawyer would tell an employee, hey, look, before they fire you, go ahead and take a leave of absence. This way you protect your position at the company, you protect your contract, and they really can't fire you while you're on a leave of absence in most situations. For example, as stated here from Smithy Law LLC website, sometimes you need time off or to tend to important personal family matters. If you need this type of break and want to know whether you can be fired for taking a leave of absence, you should know in many cases, you cannot be fired for taking a leave of absence. If Alyssa Heinersche took a leave of absence, which we know she did, that's no secret, on April 21st, and we know that her boss also took a leave of absence, no later than April 24th, by federal law alone, that gives them at least 12 weeks of unpaid time off work to deal with whatever is going on with them personally, or in this case, personally and professionally. The company could also offer its own additional augmented leave of absence options. They can have a sabbatical. They can give them all kinds of time off. Their health benefits are gonna continue during a period like that they may even decide to pay them during a leave of absence. The chances of Alyssa Heinersheet and Daniel Blake, her boss, coming back to the company in a position of authority to damage their brands again is basically zero because the independent distributors have a lot to say about this. The way the beer is distributed is Bud Light does the manufacturing and the marketing, and then independent distributors, about 500 of them, through their own organizations, actually sell the beer to customers, deliver the beer, take care of the customers, maintain those relationships, collect the money from those customers of theirs, and then continue to purchase the beer from the manufacturer. There really isn't a direct relationship between Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch, and the stores that actually stock their product. So they need these independent distributors to be happy with them and comfortable with them and feel like they're getting supported by the manufacturer. And it's not just feel like it, they need to actually get 
supported financially so that selling the beer makes them money. That is where it's a crisis right now at Bud Light because distributors, while sales have been off historically, these sales are down every week. It's a new record. This past week, which was for the sales report of June 17th, sales were actually down 28.5%, but volumes were down 30.1%. So sales is dollars. Volume is actual physical bottles and cans. It's gotten to a point where some distributors just don't make any money reselling and dealing with their product. And it's not just 30.1% spread out across the country. This is an article that came out a few weeks ago very important article from ABC News explaining not just how delivery people who are trying to deliver Bud Light get shopping carts thrown at them and get people putting their middle fingers up at them and get people yelling and cursing at them and calling them gay beer salesmen. They really do that. This covers how some specific geographies are off way more than 30% in sales. This covers a Florida geography that's off 60% from Memorial Day, from what their typical sales should be. 60% off means it's completely not financially viable to sell that product. They can't afford to pay their people. Their people are not getting the commissions that they're expected to make. Even the individual salespeople are making something like $2,000 less per month. It's like a third of their income. They cannot afford to live with that kind of cut in their income because Bud Light has gone and ruined the brand. In Florida, off 60%. In Staten Island, New York, off 50%. In Delaware, off 40%. I don't have exact numbers for multiple geographies because it's not normally published, but I am looking for it. And if I do get that information, I will absolutely do a follow-up video. I am in talks with Bump Williams about how we can get that data. I think it would be fantastic and it would really show how devastated the market for this beer actually is. Anheuser-Busch is now seemingly denying reports that the company fired two top marketing executives who were found responsible for Bud Light's disastrous Dylan Mulvaney campaign. The Daily Caller reported on Tuesday that the beer giant officially fired Group Vice President of Marketing Daniel Blake and Bud Light Marketing Vice President Alyssa Heinersheed, citing text messages with an unknown regional marketing leader at the company. Blake and Heinersheed were said to be taking a leave of absence amid a backlash for their decision to feature the trans TikToker in a March Madness commercial. Earlier this month, Daily Mail actually had a reporter approach Alyssa Heinersheet on the street of New York City who didn't talk, but her friend had said she's not supposed to talk about this, she just can't talk about it. In a statement to DailyMail.com, and also there was a follow-up statement to Daily Caller, a spokesman for Anheuser-Busch said they are both still on a leave of absence. Given the circumstances, Alyssa has decided to take a leave of absence, which we support, the spokesman said, adding that Daniel is also taking a leave of absence. In the interest of our employees' safety and privacy, we are not providing any additional information. The statement echoes the one that Anheuser-Busch made in April when it announced the two marketing executives decided to temporarily step down. Now, here's what the insider told Daily Caller about them leaving. Quote, to my understanding, if we publicly announce the word fire, it opens up the potential for them to sue us. That's why we said leave of absence, the source said, adding the wholesalers would have an absolute heyday with the leadership if they didn't remove her, meaning Heinersheet. Wholesalers were told they are both gone for good by leadership during in-person conversations, the source claimed. They already shifted all their direct reports, their subordinate employees, to new people and the head of marketing. The insider making that comment about them potentially getting sued if they say that they fired these people. Reality is they are allowed to take a leave of absence, even according to federal law. These are fancy executives, Alyssa and Daniel. So they get additional perks along with and on top of that. Also, there's a lot of eyes on this from investors to consumers to media. So it's important that however they deal with these two employees, they keep them away from the independent distributors thinking that they're going to be involved in marketing the brands anymore. And at the same time, don't get themselves in some kind of a big legal fight. The insider added that he thought Blake was actually awesome. 
He said, I think he was just caught in the crossfire. But also, he did hire Alyssa Heinersheed, so that is a fault. It is a fault. Blake is a nine-year veteran of Anheuser-Busch and oversaw marketing for both Bud Light and Budweiser. He served as group vice president of marketing for Budweiser and value brands before being promoted in May 2022 to group vice president of Anheuser-Busch's mainstream brands. He also has served at the company as the vice president of the company's value brand. In his position, Blake was responsible for hiring Heinersheed to overhaul Bud Light's marketing in June 2022 with the vision of freshening up its image. She was the first female vice president of Bud Light since its founding in 1982. Just a few months before the company released its controversial ad, Blake announced a new era for Bud Light as he shared an article about the beer's sophisticated decision to feature a female main character in its Super Bowl ad. A post to LinkedIn shortly before that also opined on how everyone is connected through the same American spirit values and, of course, Budweiser. Heiner she meanwhile, touted her strategy to ditch Bud Light's fratty reputation and embrace inclusivity to attract a young generation of drinkers in an interview just days before the Dylan Mulvaney ad was released. She said this, quote, I'm a businesswoman. I had a really clear job to do when I took over Bud Light, and it was this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time, and if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. What does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. And representation, is it sort of the heart of evolution? You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover, I mean. Bud Light has been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out of touch humor, and it was really important that we had another approach, she said. In an earlier interview with Forbes, she actually gave the same mandate. Quote, as the first woman to lead the biggest beer brand in the world, it's an amazing opportunity to really evolve and elevate Bud Light. This brand I love. This campaign is meant to feel different, to be lighter and brighter, with a confidence and magnetism, and it's really critical to depict real people and real places, she said. What I need to do is help this brand to evolve. This is my passion point. Heinersheed's job was taken over by Todd Allen, who recently served as global vice president of Budweiser. So she's been replaced at the company. With a leave of absence, you're supposed to be given the opportunity to return to your job and have the same position or an equivalent position. Are they going to do that for her? You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments below. I can't see any situation where they would allow her to go and represent Bud Light ever again because the independent distributors would never allow it. If it was up to the company, they would do it in a second because they love the idea of pushing transgender Dylan Mulvaney all over their brands. They would have Dylan Mulvaney promoting all the brands if they could, but they have independent distributors to deal with and the independent distributors can't afford to take a couple of billions of dollars of losses the way that a multi-billion dollar company like Anheuser-Busch is able to do. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Do you think they did the right thing by letting them go on a leave of absence? They could have fired them sooner but things were so chaotic at that time and they would have had to explain, well, what are you doing firing everyone? Who's gonna take over? What's gonna happen? At least the leave of absence seems to have bought them a little bit of time. But realistically, is there any chance in the world they're going to try to explain to their independent distributors and now the media who's all watching this that they're putting Alyssa Heinersheet back in charge of the Bud Light brand? I mean, it does seem ridiculous, but it also was ridiculous to use Dylan Mulvaney in the first place. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Really appreciate you guys. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.